Until our last video, we discussed how we could able to perform a get operation, deserialize the values, and also perform the assertion operations. And all these days, we have been doing the post and the get operation using playwrights object, just something but the API request object over here in all the tests and even for the helper method, which is the get token method, we used the same thing, which is not quite right, right? I mean, we need to somehow refactor this code in a way that we could able to use this code in a reusable manner. In order to do that, we need to somehow bring this code up to a separate class file so that we could able to extend this particular object creation in that class file and just use it over here. So how do we actually do that? Well, in order to do that, we are gonna create a new class file and I'm going to call this as probably playwright driver. And this is exactly the same idea that we discussed while creating the playwright driver for the spec flow integration with the UI operation. And that's exactly the same idea over here, the same driver pattern, but just that we are going to be using it for the API testing this time. So I'm going to be creating the playwright driver over here. Let me stop the execution completely because it's going to show this line over there. And then once we have the playwright driver, and let's call a method here as private async of task. And you'll understand what task I'm going to be returning later. And then I'm going to say create API context. So this API context is the one which is going to do magics for us. So I'm going to copy the code which we just created over here. And I'm going to paste it over here. Let's add the missing references. So we have the request context over here. So we just have to return it. So instead of creating a variable, we can just perform a return operation. And because we are going to be returning a API request, and it is going to be of type I API request. So we need to somehow either return an I API request, or we can also return an I API request context over here so both are completely acceptable because iapi request is actually inheriting it's a partial interface of the iapi request interface itself all right and let's fix this issue it's because the name basically so now that we have this particular method i then need to call this particular method in the constructor so that i could able to initialize it so i'm going to create a constructor and i'm going to assign that to a variable so the variable which I'm going to be creating is basically going to be a private read-only task of I API request context. And I'm also going to make this as null variable check, which is very important while we do it. And then I'm going to say request context is equal to null while it's being assigned. And this particular request context is equal to the create API request. That's it. That's the one thing which I wanted to do it. And once I have it, I then can call, and because this is going to be private, and we can't call this private I request context as well, I need to somehow call this publicly from my code. And that's something I'm going to be doing using I API request context of the API request context. And I'm going to call pretty much like this dot I'm going to be saying get awaiter dot get result method. So now with this API request context, I could be able to access it. And you'll also notice that the IDE is also now referring that there is a dereferencing of possibly null reference. So basically this IAPI request context can also be null. So if you put a null check over here and at the same time, you can also use the conditional access, something like this. That's it. So you can see that this request context can be null. This, this may not be returning you the actual value. So that is something you could able to fix that. And you also say that once again, there is going to be one more error here. It can be a nullability error. So this issue that you can fix using a nullable variable check over here for the I API request context as well. So this is really cool that you can see that the null can happen anywhere in your code. You are keep checking that and you're explicitly mentioning it over here, which is great. All right, so now that we have did this changes over here, and then I am going to be actually disposing the object, so which is something I have to do it as well. So I'm gonna be calling the I disposable interface, and I need to implement the missing member. And I'm actually gonna be 
disposing request context itself so i'm going to call the underscore request context dot that is something called as dispose and let's also do the conditional access there we go that's about the dispose operation that we have to all right so now that we have done a bit of the pattern over here uh, so the code is more aligned to the actual coding standard and now that we need to call this particular playwright driver class within our test and then start using it so in order to do that we are going to the unit test onecs file over here and then i'm going to create the constructor in this particular class file because we have not created any constructor so far so i'm going to do that so ctor and i'm going to say playwright driver of the playwright driver and then i'm going to create a read only field for the playwright driver and this playwright driver is going to be the one which is going to replace all these things right now so now you can see that the number of lines of code is going to tremendously reduce for us so basically this playwright driver the underscore playwright driver dot request will do all those things so i can just get rid of these three lines of code and put the playwright driver dot driver over here and then i can use the api request context and then the post async and because the api request context is a nullable uh, reference type i can use this null reference over here but you know what the thing happens with the ide is that if it is going to be null reference then you need to somehow fix the null reference almost everywhere in your code or you can suppress the warning by using an exclamation mark something like this so for the simplicity purpose i am just going to add this exclamation mark i'm not going to go deep into how do you fix that particular thing it is just that it is better just for the ide purpose you see that particular error we can fix it just with the exclamation mark so that you don't see that yellow line which is kind of naggy that's it that's about it and once we have this you can see that the code is pretty fine uh, and similarly i can get rid of these codes that you are seeing over here at least not the token uh, and that's going to be underscore playwright driver api request context exclamation mark over here and that's going to be the same thing for that as well so i'm going to copy that's it you can see that we have reduced the number of lines of code it is more readable this time which is great and now if we try running this test this is going to fail eventually i will tell you why so if i put a breakpoint here and now if i try running the debug test uh, but before that we also need to run the application there we go and now if i do a debug you will see that we are actually getting a first error it says that the x unit sdk test class exception it says that the following constructor parameter did not have a matching fixture data to the playwright driver and this is happening because if you have learned my x unit series in youtube which you can directly go to youtube and go to x unit with selenium something like that this is the playlist where you can see that we have talked exclusively about how you can handle the fixture data and how you can share the context within the selenium using the dependency injections and stuff that's exactly what we need to do even here for this particular test as well and the way we can do it is by using the i class fixture interface of x unit so you need to call this i class fixture over here and then you also need to call the object that you are going to be instantiating that you have given in the constructor over here which is nothing but the playwright driver so this way it is going to create an object for the playwright driver for you and then it is automatically going to create all the instantiations for you which is good because without the instantiation you won't even call the create api context method which you have created over here in your private uh, create api context so now that everything is pretty much done so i think this time while we try debugging the test it should be working as expected there we go now we have over here and you will see that while i try executing this particular line of code it is going to go all the way to this particular constructor and then it's going to call the create api uh, context method and then it's going to initialize everything for you so let me do that there we go so let's see what is the response you can see that the response is 200 which is great and you will also notice that the json string is coming authentication is happening and the test is passing as well and for some reason the test is not passing oh yeah i know the reason because we have to yes this json serializer we just missed on our last 
video that's exactly what is just boiling down over here i think i have to fix that this token doesn't exist here cool so let me try running the whole test instead of running one by one because i know these tests are going to execute now so you'll see that authenticate test is passed and the get product test is passing as well so which means our playwright driver implementation that we just did for the code that we had all these days in every unit tests are now replaced with the playwright driver where the objects are created in just one single place and then we can use it everywhere.